The history of Waikiki School reaches back over 150 years, and the story of the aina on which it sits goes back even further. Long ago, the land where Waikiki School now stands was used by the early Hawaiians for growing their food. The biggest taro patches on Oahu were found right here. Not only was taro grown, but fish were raised in small ponds that were made especially for this purpose. Water from the Noah and Palolo streams was used to irrigate these ponds. The name of Waikiki, which means spouting water, refers to the water used to irrigate the fish ponds and taro fields that were found here. The earliest record of the school's existence was in 1880. 48 students attended the school at its first location across from the Moana Hotel. Back then, all instruction was in Hawaiian. Students worked in the school gardens much as we do today, raising beautiful flowers. They walked to the area where our present school is located to get fertilizer for their plants from the dairy farm, which then existed here on our current campus. In the 1920s, the school moved to what is now Jefferson Elementary School's orthopedic unit. Here, classrooms were especially dark during the cloudy, rainy season, as the school had no electricity for 20 years. In 1958, Waikiki School's permanent location at the foothills of Diamond Head was selected. The site was considered by Hawaiian legend to be blessed land under the protection of Diamond Head. In 1964, a ceremony was held to dedicate the opening of Waikiki School on our present campus. The first principal, Miss Elizabeth Baldwin, lived in the custodial cottage and her dog was a much beloved part of the school. There was no cafeteria and students walked home for lunch or ate in their classrooms. The school's evolution as a mindful school began with Mrs. Joyce Choi, who became principal in 1981. Under her leadership, the school's color, blue for the sky and white for ocean foam, were selected, and the school's song, On the Slopes of Diamond Head, was written. Here's our first mindful principal, Mrs. Joyce Choi, talking about her vision for our mindful school. school is located on the foothills of Diamond Head. Our school's vision is Waikiki School, a safe, nurturing, vibrant environment that encourages lifelong learning. What we've, we've evolved is a mindful school, a school where thinking is, is of the greatest priority, a place where the thinking process becomes the, the process for learning. Uh, where critical and creative thinking are important in all that we do. In the 1990s, under Mrs. Choi's leadership, the school decided to become a school community-based management school, a school governed by the decisions of its community. This is a clip of Mrs. Tabor talking about the beginning of our mindful school. I was a counselor at the school when we first had a retreat and at the retreat we had business people, people from all factions of the community, teachers, DOE uh, personnel, and we came together and we said what would it look like if we could create a school, an ideal school that would be a home for the mind? What would it look like? And from that retreat, we generated a concept for the what we now call the Mindful School. To bring the vision to life, Mrs. Choi began our long-standing partnership with Dr. Art Costa, whose visionary habits of mind provided the foundation for the school's flourishing and mindful culture. Here's a clip of Dr. Art Costa talking about the mindful habits. Intelligent, successful people had a set of attributes that seemed to assist them in making good decisions and in uh, solving problems. And these were not always um, um, scholars, but rather they were people from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, salespeople, artists, physicians, lawyers, auto mechanics, teachers. And so um, these seem to be the um, attributes of people who are very successful. So I began to tease out this list and over the years have researched them and added to them. We started off with about seven and then we went to 12 and then 14 and now 16 habits of mind. And we may not be finished. There could be, work, well could be some more. Um, so these seem to be the habits then that are indicative of people who are very skillful. The mindful vision of the early pioneers has remained a constant through the terms of the three principles who have served since its start. You already heard from Doris Choi, the first mindful principal. Now let's hear from 
Cheryl Lipman, the second principal in our Mindful Schools history. Children enjoy school at Waikiki because they are loved. Their hearts are nurtured and their minds are nurtured. I think one of the things is that there is a total community buy-in. Yes. Everybody is proud of being part of a mindful school. And I, I think if you look historically at Waikiki School, it's continued through three principles now. I think it will continue for the next hundred years. Today we celebrate another milestone in the history of Waikiki School with the opening of the MLC, a new chapter in the evolution of our mindful school is about to be written.